Canadian Conservatives are finally standing up against the transgender movement, and they're winning. After a decade, transgender activists are getting pushback from Canadian Conservative politicians. Now, a lot of Canadians don't even recognize their country anymore, because for years, no conservative politician in Canada would touch the transgender issue with a 10-foot pole, because they're essentially gun-shy of any issue considered to be socially conservative. And legislators thus allowed progressive politicians and activists to implement gender ideology entirely unimpeded from Trudeau's conversion therapy ban, which actually criminalizes some conversations between therapists or pastors and their congregants, to public school, the public school system, which actively hides information about children transitioning from parents. In basically less than a decade, the transgender agenda was enshrined into law and policy in virtually every Canadian institution at every level. And that all started to change in June 2023, when a politician many Canadians had never heard about, New Brunswick Premier Blaine Higgs, finally decided he'd had enough. And Higgs essentially decided, looking at the school system, that this was an intolerable situation. He didn't do a lot of background research into how it would play. As a former teacher and as a dad, he just decided this would be the right thing to do. He announced that going forward, children under 16 seeking to change their gender at school by changing their names or their pronouns would need parental permission. I want to point out this is like a pretty anemic parental rights policy. It's just you need to tell the parents that this is going on. And again, most Canadians were unaware that this was even happening. The National Post is the only newspaper that reports on this issue at all. And even then, it's been pretty recent since they started doing deep dives on this. And then the predictable happened. LGBT activists went hard after Blaine Higgs, and he refused to back down. In fact, he said he was willing to fight an election over the issue. And then polling came out and proved his position was actually wildly popular. And it's interesting to see the domino effect that Higgs has had here because he proved that the water was just fine and all kinds of other premiers started to take notice. So on August 22, Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe announced a nearly identical policy and he doubled down even harder because polls indicated that 86% of Saskatchewaners approved and so what LGBT activists did is they deferred to the courts because they, the courts are incredibly progressive and they figured that whenever the legislators, legislators or legislators do something that they disagree with, they can just default to the courts and appeal to human rights. And so the Saskatchewan Court of King's Bench granted an injunction against the policy, and in an unprecedented move, Scott Moe actually recalled the legislator and then used the notwithstanding clause, which is from Section 33 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. It allows legislators to override the courts in rare circumstances, and he overruled the injunction to put it into effect anyways. Again, this is unprecedented. This is a conservative politician actually using a rarely used tool in their constitutional toolbox to say, this issue is so important, we cannot allow the courts to interfere with the will of the people. Following that, then Manitoba Premier Heather Stephenson promised similar policies. She lost an election before she could do so, but an Angus Reid poll showed 76% of support for Manitobans for parental notification. Notice all of these polls are well over 60% of the population, so a super majority of Canadians support these policies. Next was Ontario Education Minister Stephen Leachy. Uh, he held a press conference to announce that the Ford government also supported parental notification. Uh, it's really frustrating that the Ford government hasn't actually taken those words and turned them into policy because we know that this is still going on in Ontario schools. But um, So they may be empty words, but it means they recognize there's a trend shifting here. And it's, it's good to get ourselves on the record supporting parental notification. And then, Alberta Premier Danielle Smith blew the issue wide open. She proposed legislation uh, that prohibits all gender reassignment surgeries, that is, sex change surgeries on youth under 18, uh, a ban on puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones for minors under the age of 16, and restricting female sports to females, and mandating a parental opt-in for each instance a teacher wishes to discuss gender identity or sexuality and requiring parental notification for changing a student's given name or pronoun. So Danielle Smith went farther than all of these other premiers in saying, this is a medical travesty. Children are being incredibly damaged and we actually need to put a stop to this. Children cannot undergo these surgeries or take these treatments. And then 
As I mentioned in a, in a previous video, federal conservative party leader Pierre Polyev followed suit. Uh, he was ducking questions on this at first. On September 2022 of 2023, he announced his support for parental rights and said that Justin Trudeau needed to leave the kids alone, which is the slogan of the parental rights movement, and since then has defended uh, his position of reserving female spaces for females only in the press. Now Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe uh, concurs, and he's going even farther. This month, he announced plans to actually restrict boys' bathrooms and changing rooms to boys and girls' changing rooms and bathrooms to girls after it came out that boys, biological boys, were changing alongside girls in a changing room at the Balgoni Elementary School, which is a rural school in Saskatchewan. And since I uh, worked on the story, another update on that story has come out. It turns out that the two boys who were changing alongside girls before gym class, um, this controversy started when a grade seven student voiced her discomfort to her parents. And as it turns out, these two children are the children of Jared Clark, a Saskatchewan NDP MLA. What are the chances that one dad has two transgender kids? I think of a funny quote that I saw on X. Well, I guess it was kind of grim in some ways. He said, a transgender child is like a vegan cat. Um, we all know who's making the decisions there. But... Anyways, now Scott Moe has promised to change the policy, and he, he announced, uh, if we are re-elected, I'd be very clear. There will be a directive that would come from the Minister of Education that would say that biological boys would not be in the change room with biological girls. And he called this a first order of business, his words priority, and when he was asked about the rights of trans-identified students, he said, quote, what about the rights of all the other girls that are changing in that very change room? They have rights as well. Now, these developments are very significant because in just over a year, basically from Blaine Higgs' move till now, gender ideology has gone from an untouchable agenda to one that conservative politicians are actively eager to run against right across the country. So Danielle Smith, for example, she's portrayed in the media as some foaming at the mouth right winger, but the reality is she's not religious as far as I know. She is not socially conservative, and in fact, in her previous political career as leader of the Wild Rose Party, she left that party complaining about the social conservative influence in that party. So she doesn't see this issue as a social conservative issue. She sees this as a matter of uh, merely protecting kids. And so now we've got this moderate libertarian premier willing to go all in despite knowing full well that she will face the full wrath of the LGBT movement. Pierre Polyev is no social conservative either, and yet he's willing to stake out positions that would have been unthinkable just two years ago. Why? Why are not socially conservative politicians willing to take on the transgender movement? Because they know they can win. It's almost more encouraging to me when I see politicians who are not socially conservative, who are not religious, tackle this issue head on, because it tells us two things. One, they know that they can win on this issue, and two, it tells us that the LGBT movement's hold on the Canadian consensus, which was always a manufactured one, is breaking. I've been saying for years that Canadians have far more common sense than their leaders. The trans agenda was imposed on us top down by an airtight faction of progressive politicians, activists, and academics, and sort of protected by a phalanx of government-funded media and the state broadcaster, the CBC. And it only took one premier deciding he'd had enough to break this whole thing wide open. And when he did, it turns out that Canadians by wide margins were huge fans of uh, parental rights and common sense policies. It turns out that Trudeau and trans activists do not speak for Canadians as they so often claim. And this is a lesson this is a lesson that conservative politicians need to learn because the problem with conservative politicians in Canada is very often they do not have any desire to lead. They want to essentially be progressives but with a smarter accountant. They don't want to touch any of these issues and so these issues are dominated entirely by radical ideologues. And it took Blaine Higgs to show us that much more was possible. I hope they learned their lesson and I hope that what we're seeing here is a turning of the tide on a very, very important issue. Thank you so much for joining The Bridgehead. We hope you found it helpful, as always. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please do uh, like the video, share it around, subscribe, tell your friends to subscribe, leave a comment. Um, you can heckle or harass me in the comments. And uh, if you have some ideas of subjects you really think that we should be covering, you can drop those too. Otherwise, you can find us wherever you get your podcast content. 
Thanks so much for listening.